Hello and welcome back to the channel. Okay, so this video is geared to someone building their very first extension. So if you've never built an extension before, this video should definitely help. Um, I originally recorded this for my Browser Extension Academy. So if you wanna um, go on and see where this video leads to, there's a link in the description to see that. And when I originally recorded this, I had a bit of a sore throat, so that's just a warning there. So what we have is, I've just got a, a folder here um, with one file in it, this manifest.json file. Now this, in a sense, is the starting point of a uh, an extension. So if we save this and we're to open this in Chrome, so we're going to load unpacked, uh, make sure you have developer mode enabled, and this is just in the, the manage extensions tray here. Um, so if we click on to load unpacked, I'm going to find the folder that this uh, extension is in. You don't need to zip it up or anything. So what we'll see is this... Uh, you know, this file just, or this element that appears here for our extensions. This means this has been added into Chrome. Um, like you can see, we just have this manifest.json file with this in it. So right now, this won't do anything. So if we click into the details, we can see that there's, there's no permissions, there's no site access, there's no views. It's just a, a raw extension. But from here, we can adapt it to actually start to do things. So if we wanted to Let's think of a, a, a rough example of an extension. So say we have a, a script we want to inject into the page. We can add a new element in here called content scripts. And we put in an array here. And then as you can see for uh, Copilot just here, it's suggesting something we might want to do. So you then pass in an object. So you can have uh, multiple content scripts in here. And the format is is very straightforward. So there's essentially a matches. So this would either be, um, you know, keys like this, such as all URLs, um, which is something we'll get onto later in more specifics. But just to give you an idea, this would give you a longer web store review when you go to submit your extension. But if it's something you just want to build and test and run locally, then you know you could use that. But that would basically mean that your content script is injected into every single page as the user is browsing. Um, obviously there's sometimes that is useful, but not always. Now underneath that we have the script itself. So this would just be JS and then, um, in an array here, we can add our script. So for example, here, we just call it content.js. So for that, we'd need to add this new file like that. And then we're going to change this from all URLs, um, just to keep this slightly more, um, Clear of an example, so we're going to let it into one site, which will be uh, Wikipedia. So as we can see here, we have the uh, three W's there in this. So then we want to just add a star at the end. So we just want to be broad with this, and then we can actually check it in our code if we wanted to as well. So let's say we, we save that, um, and we're just going to add in a simple console log, just to say hello from, from content.js. So if we now go over here, we're going to go back and refresh our extension. And then if we come into Wikipedia, inspect, go into the console and refresh, you can see our script is now injected into this page. So that's a quick, uh, very, very uh, simple example of how you can use an extension like that. Um, now, throughout this course, we'll be building on this a lot, but I want to show you one other um, area to look for as well. So the other main part of an extension is this extension tray up here. So obviously with a lot of extensions, if you click onto this, you can see uh, you know more information. Something happens uh, when you click up here. So this is all triggered from a, uh, it's called a pop-up. So if we just close this out of the way, so you can see you can have as many, many of these as you like. Um, you can obviously pin them up here to make sure that they're shown. Separate to what we're looking at here, but what we're going to do now is add our own uh, pop-up. So we're going to just add this underneath. So we're going to add a comma in here, and then we want to put in action. And then in here, as you can tell, uh, Copilot's trying to rush ahead with this, um, but this will then be an object. Now we need to pass in the, the pop-up uh, here, so we'll call it default pop-up. And then, like it shows, pass in a page. Um, so if we were to save that like this, 
and then to make sure first we add this new file and we'll just say testing so if we save this and save this and come back into here and refresh now when we go over here we can see we have our basics and when we open it let's just move them out of the way we'll pin it we can tap on we can actually see this so from here you can see the start point of how you can actually start to build um, your extension like this now one of the other key uh, parts of building any extension is messaging so for example our pop-up here can communicate to our, um, our content script if we have permissions to run that on that page so that content script for example because we've only inject injected it into wikipedia if they're on another site and we try and send a message to our content script it's not going to be able to hear it so to get around that you can add um, an extra page that's sort of running in the background so this is called a service worker so we can add one of these as well so we can do this from background again uh, Copilot is very useful when it comes to building out your manifest. You can also, if you're using VS Code, you can install an, a, uh, an extension that helps you uh, type and give suggestions like this for um, building your manifest files, which is really useful. So it should normally be up to date um, with the latest uh, properties and the different keys to use and all the permissions. Um, because of the change to manifest version 3 recently, as you can see up here, um, these have changed around um, but anyway, I'll put links to those uh, in the sort of resources area of the course if you want to, uh, you know, be able to use this when you're using VS Code. But anyways, this is how you can create a service worker. So I'm not going to call it background. Um, these used to be called background scripts. So that could be an HTML uh, page or a JavaScript file that you'll be able to run from, from within here. But that's changed recently to be a service worker. So let's just call it sw.js. So we're going to create this. And then in here, we'll just say console log service worker. So we'll save that, check what we have here. And then we're going to go back and refresh. Now, what you'll see now is we can actually inspect views because our service worker is, is separate to the page. So when we go over here, this isn't really the service worker we're looking at. When we go over here, this isn't the service worker. Um, but if we want to find that, we can just click into here. And then we can view like a, a mini dev tools just for that service worker. And there you can see our, our console log. But yeah, this doesn't have access to the DOM or anything like that. It's sort of similar to a, um, a Cloudflare, Cloudflare worker or a, um, if you want to find more information, you can go to the, the service worker docs here. I'll put a link down below um, if you want to look into this a little bit more. Um, but essentially it's a, a version of this that can run um, in its own environment. So they, they do sleep, uh, go to sleep if they haven't been called or accessed for more than I think it's five minutes. It's changed a few times, but normally around there. But if you send a message to it, it then wakes up and can then, you know, act on what you've, you've sent it. Um, just in the, the next video here, we'll go into looking into service workers and messaging and, and how you can actually interact with all these different elements. Um, but hopefully this video can show how you can sort of use these core areas here to start to build and think of ideas for your extension. But essentially a lot of this comes through the manifest file here. So what we put into here can control what our extension will actually use. One more thing I do want to show though, before we uh, move on to you know, these next topics is permissions. Now there's a number of permissions that you can, you can use depending on you know, exactly what your extension is going to do. The most important thing when uh, using your, your adding in permissions is making sure that you actually need them. So for example, there's some permissions that you think you might need um, but actually, you know, they come along by default. So for example, because we already have uh, our host permission set up here, we don't really need to add any other uh, permissions for that. There is also a separate um, host permissions uh, part of the uh, manifest as well. So you can just sort of control these in a different way. There's also optional permissions. So these are things that the user can use, but they don't have to use them. So you can then have some sort of onboarding flow where you trigger to ask for these permissions, which we'll look into later in the course. Um, you know, you can request on certain actions that the user takes to then request that permission, then you can use it. And you can also check if they've given that permission before. So there's optional permissions and there's also optional um, host, host permissions. Um, 
similar to optional permissions, these are like um, certain sites that you might need to inject your content script into, but you don't necessarily have to. Now, when you're using something like this, this is where you'd normally want to uh, like inject your content script from your service worker. So that is a you know different way of being able to, to run it. It essentially, um, like in your service worker, we're basically manipulating what is shown just here based on the page that the user is on. Um, but that's something we'll look into when we get more into detail of, of content scripts. And if you have any really specific questions to what you're trying to build, feel free to send me a message. But um, hopefully this gives you an understanding of how you can get started with extensions. And uh, now we can move on to some uh, more advanced topics.